Hey guys, I hope you are having a great morning. My name is Thomas. And I'm Kizzy. And we're the Crawford Chronicles. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, today we're coming at you guys live from our home. And before we get started, we would just like to thank everyone for subscribing and following us on YouTube. Yes, we truly appreciate all that you have done and, and comment and giving us suggestions and things. We really appreciate you guys. Yes, we do. We appreciate all of it and we appreciate all of the feedback. Before we get started today, we would love for you guys to like, subscribe, and comment on our YouTube video. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've had a lot of people reach out to us, uh, Kizzy. And uh, for some strange reason, people wanted to know how you guys met. We thought, we thought it was a little unorthodox uh, to explain uh, how we met. Uh, we've been together for uh, a little over 16 years. So I'll give you the best synopsis I can of our history of how we met. And of course, you know, it's always three stories to every conversation. His side, my side, and the real side. But let's just say it's only two sides, because yeah. my side is the right side. The truth is somewhere in in between, but I try my best to, to give you uh, as accurate of information as I can. Mm -hmm. Now, again, uh, my wife and I, we met back in 2007. We met here in Metro Atlanta. Strangely enough, we're from the same hometown. Yes, we are. So, at that time, I was single, single, ready to mingle, and... Uh, <laughs> I was single. <laughs> and she was single, <laughs> slash single and dating. Yeah, of course. You were, single. Dating. You were <laughs> dating, too, for that matter. Single, single, but it's complicated. Right, it's complicated. <laughs> now, okay, we can go complicated <laughs> but I was too I was in a new city she was in a new city so I had left my hometown and I was in the new city like a deer in headlights yeah like the deer in headlights and, and truth be told I actually got her fresh off the bus that's how he liked to say it fresh off the Greyhound bus she had one bag <laughs> and uh I knew <laughs> once I once I heard she was in town I knew I had to uh get to know her better because I knew of her from my hometown, and at that time, uh, a good friend of mine actually met you uh, at a party. At a party. Yes, around your birthday. That's the funny thing. It was around your birthday. One of my girlfriends had the same birthday as you. Okay. And she had a birthday party at one of her friends' house. Yes. And so I went with her, and I saw some of your friends. Yeah, you saw some of my friends, and uh, my friend is a talker, so... He went up to Kizzy, he introduced himself, and... Uh, found out all the information. Found out all the information. Yeah. And believe it or not, he called me the next day telling me, you won't believe, you know, Kizzy from your hometown. She's just moved to Atlanta. She is so amazing. She's beautiful. She's smart. And I'm like, man, okay, cool. Keep talking. <laughs> and so uh, eventually... Just so happened, she was looking for a house at that time. I was looking to buy a house. Yeah. And a buddy of mine, wife, who was a real estate agent, you mm -hmm. were you were conversing with her. Because she was from my same hometown as well. Same hometown. And she was conversing with her. So I reached out to my buddy, spoke to his wife, told his wife, I heard Kizzy's in town. Please give her my number. And she gave me a call and asked me, you know, was it okay for her to give my telephone number to him? And I didn't know who he was because he's a little <laughs> bit older than me. So even though we're from the same hometown, I didn't know him. But everybody in my family knew him. So that was a cool yeah. thing about it yeah. is I wasn't dating someone that no one knew but me. Yeah. But I didn't know him. But I'm like, sure, you can give him my telephone number. Yeah. And he called like almost immediately, y'all. Yes, I did. <laughs> We're, we're, we're from the same hometown. I graduated high school. I graduated high school on Friday. Monday, I was off in the Navy. So a lot of people, if you weren't in high school, I didn't really know you and you really didn't know me. Right. And Kizzy is seven years younger than myself. So we just, we, 
I knew of her, but I didn't know her. But I knew enough about her to know that she was very smart. I knew that she was very driven. And I knew some of her friends and family who was around my age. So it just made sense for me to uh, reach out to her and want to get to know her better. Okay, guys. Well, let me tell you this part. All right. So he called me on that Sunday night. And we talked for hours, I think. And we were cool or whatever. Scheduled to go. Uh, no, we just talked that night. Um, Tuesday, Monday came. Tuesday came, which was his actual birthday. Yeah. So the birthday weekend was the weekend before. So my girlfriend was selling her birthday early. But his birthday was actually on a Tuesday that week. It was on an odd day. Like it was on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday. I believe it was on Tuesday, though. So we talked on Sunday. And um, I ended up, I was in college at the time getting my master's. And I lost my paper. And I ended up, couldn't go to work because I had to recreate the paper. So I called in that Tuesday after I finished the paper, I called him up. And like, hey, I heard, you know, happy birthday. What, what are you doing for your birthday? And he was like. Laying on the couch watching ESPN, which that, is pretty much one of my favorite pastimes at that time. And I was like, none of you little girlfriends take you out of the I'm like, you ain't doing nothing for your birthday? <laughs> I know it. And when she called me, I'm, it's my birthday. I'm laying on the couch watching ESPN. I was fine with just celebrating my birthday, just chilling at home by myself. So when she called and said, I would like to take you out to celebrate your birthday, my first response was, oh, you would like to take me out? So that pretty much means uh, you paying for it. Right, right. So I was game. I was game. I think I had him, guys, when I decided to pay for for dinner. I think she thought I was going to be a sugar mama or something. <laughs> I was rolling in the dough, whatever. But I, so I took him out. So our relationship started with me initiating the first date and paying for the first date. Yeah, which, which for me being a little old school, that was new for me. You know, we're used to always, uh, you know, taking the, the woman out. We're used to being the one who actually covers the tab. So it was refreshing for me to find someone who was willing to take me out and cover the tab. So when she just said, you know, would you like to go out? I was putting on my, I was ironing my clothes, getting ready to go. I was, I was game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I took you out. Do you remember the name of the restaurant? Was it Ruby Tuesday? I think it was, um, yeah, it was Tuesdays. It, it wasn't Ruby Tuesdays. Wasn't it, Ruby, it was Tuesdays. It was Tuesdays. Okay. So because I, my, I had a young son at the time. He was, Four, and he was in daycare. So I decided to take him to dinner early before I had to pick up my son. So we went to dinner maybe like 4 o'clock in yeah, the afternoon. 4 or 5 o'clock. Because I think I had to pick him up by 6.30. So we met him at the restaurant about 4 o'clock. And I took him, we went out to dinner. And it was really nice. We had a good time. We had a great time. You know, the most refreshing thing when I met kids, when we first initially went out on our first date, I was a little skeptical skeptical because she was younger than myself and once we sat down and got a chance to get to know each other I was very impressed on just her you know how she carried herself and you know what her goals were she was a very driven person so I knew I already knew a little bit about her I knew where she was from I knew her family so I wanted to get to know her better yeah and and I think I, I really appreciate the fact that he was up in Atlanta. He had been up here about 10 years. He was very established and, and everything. And so it was cool to find someone that knew the area. And I think my mom was really excited when I started talking to him because she was really scared for me to be up in Atlanta yeah. by myself with my, my son. And so the fact that I met somebody that was from our own hometown that she knew, I think she felt really uh, secure knowing that about it. Yeah. You know, the crazy thing is I'm actually around your parents' age when you first met me. And our kids, mm -hmm. like uh, my oldest son, he's 20, getting ready to be 27. When I met kids, she was 28. Mm -hmm. And our youngest son, he's getting ready to turn 20. So now in retrospect, I can see how your mom felt because what she wanted from you is what I want for our kids. I want them to meet somebody who is uh, caring, mm -hmm. uh, someone who's loving, someone who's driven, and someone who actually uh, has goals. Yeah. 
Yeah, especially with me being a female and, and being alone, it, it was definitely kind of scary for her. But, you know, I'm one of the people don't come in and wide open like, let's do this. I wasn't scared at all. But it was cool to be able to meet somebody soon after, really, because I moved to Atlanta in the end of January. Yes. And I met him in October. In October. So, oh, but yeah, let me tell you this little funny joke right now, right? So... We we pretty much once we started dating, it was pretty much a wrap. We knew that we were going to be very serious, so we were hanging out a lot. We were going to each other's house. I was leaving stuff at his house about two or three weeks in. I was leaving a toothbrush and stuff like that. So November Thanksgiving came, guys, and we both went home separately. <laughs> So now this is like a month, like three weeks in. I go to my mom's house. He go to his mom's house. I don't, it's crickets. I don't hear <laughs> nothing from this man. So I pop up at his house, at his mom's house. I'm like, oh, so you don't know me now that we in A there, right? <laughs> he was good when he was in Atlanta, but you don't know. He's like, it's just three weeks. You ain't like me. But he know that we was like really chilling hard in Atlanta. But he had like, you know, me when we get back. Listen, later. guys, you know, I'm a mama's boy. So mm -hmm. all the men out there who are mother's boys, you guys understand, like, when you go home, you have to spend that time with Big Mama. You do. Big Mama want her time. And at that time, my dad, who passed away three years ago, he was alive too. So when I go home, it was all about spending that time with my mom, spend that time with my dad. That's going to take the vast majority of my day. So when kids would call me around 1 o'clock, hey, you know, you act like you don't know me. I'm like, oh, my Lord. Like, you know. <laughs> maybe I should think about this situation a little bit more. You know, because for me, I was still, I knew I liked her a lot. And I just felt like we were still in that getting to know you phase. We was in the getting to know you phase. But if I'm leaving two brushes at your house. That's a dead giveaway. And, you know, <laughs> you come into my house after work on a regular basis. You know, that was pretty much like you could at least have a conversation when we get dated. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, looking back at it, you know, 16 plus years later. I think we should have had a game plan. Well, and that's the we thing, had too. A game. We didn't talk about it. It just happened. And she, he wasn't used to dating anyone from his hometown. I, I, I never dated anyone from my hometown once I graduated high school. And left Atlanta. I mean, especially in yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. And so when I, when I go home, for me, it was all about just spending time with my family. Right. Right. You know. and, and it took me a while to see that even now that when I go home, I want to spend as much time with my mom and my dad, uh, when I'm a dad, my mom and my cousins or whoever that's around. Uh, I want to spend as much time with them as possible. And so I get it now. But at that time, she didn't get it. I, I didn't get it. I was just like, dang. He, he's like, we just love each other. And it, <laughs> at about Atlanta, we go see the, the folks. So I'll see you later on. We can, <laughs> we can do this later on. Like, Give me a chance to kind of like, you know, flow with my family. Yeah. We can we can touch so, bases a little later. So I get it. I get it. I still like to joke about it, how he said, you know, I told him how he had like, he didn't know me though when we got down there. Like, you know, and you know, believe it or not, it, I'm kind of like tapping her under the table because I hate she brought this up. <laughs> <laughs> she bring, she bring this, she bring this up. And I want this to be something that we just both forget. <laughs> but she brings it up. I don't care if we're out on dates. I don't care if we're out at networking events. If people ask us how do we met, how do we meet, she's going to bring this up. She can leave that out. Okay. We're good. You don't have to bring that up. Well, we, the world knows it now. I you and, know you too. <laughs> yeah, it's like the world knows it now. So everybody, you know now. Okay. Okay, so fast, fast forward. We knew from the beginning that we wanted to be together. And so it was easy for us. It was just too easy for me because I, I was used to it being like a cat and mouse type game. And when kids came, she knew what she wanted. She, she knew uh, she had goals. She was driven. And we both kind of like we was equally yoked when it came to that. So fast forward, mm -hmm. uh, we, we met each other in 2007. Uh, we married in in two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. 
When we met each other, I had just started my moving company. I run a moving company here in Metro Atlanta. It's called Tate the Great Moving Company. If you know anyone in Atlanta, Shameless call us. Plug. Hey, it's, I, I have to plug it. Listen, <laughs> I have to plug Tate the Great Moving Company. Give us a call. And so I had just started my company now, which is pretty much a household name yeah. here in Metro. <laughs> it's a household name. So when I met her, the thing that I love about her, which it took some years for us to get it right, was she understood that I had goals. I had just started my company. Yes. And I, we used to drive down a highway and I used to tell her, you know, one day you're going to see Take the Great Moving Trucks going up and down this road. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything came uh, into full circle it did. years later. You know, and the thing about, I think, with both of us is we've all been very supportive of each other. You know, so of course, we're going to know it with each other when it comes to certain things that may take us away from each other. But overall, we have always supported each other with our businesses and with whatever plans or whatever we Even want. Even though it gets complicated. Even though it gets complicated. And I think that that's how we grow, though. We are, we've been able to grow every year. Every single year. Because we, we grow together, we, we work together, and we're okay with sacrificing some time sometimes to because we know it takes a lot to build businesses and to be successful. Um, but we know how to take time, too. I think that's why we travel so much. That's why we travel so much. I'm going to give you guys just an insider of like how we evolved into the couple that we are now. Like I said, I started my company back in 07. I grinded, put a lot of hours, a lot of sweat equity in, a lot of uh, a lot of resources and investments into building my company. So by 2017, Kizzy, she persuaded me, like, you need to start going out to these different networking events. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a blue collar guy. I used to be blue collar guy, still a blue collar guy at heart. I was used to just working and grinding and building my company and just, you know, hoping and praying that we'll get referrals. But over the years, up until 2017, kids had convinced me to go to a real estate connection group meeting here in Metro Atlanta. Right. Because he was me. He he was trying to network with these people online, and uh, they knew him. They knew of him. But I'm like, you'll be in front of them. You get to see people. You yeah. get to uh, introduce yourself. Because it's so much easier when you're face to face with people. If you got any kind of personality, it's good face to face instead of you know trying to make connections online. So yeah, to be able to have that networking event that you can actually go to physically talk to people. I mean, it was a no brainer for yeah. me. And so I had to kind of keep pushing him to get out of his shell. Yeah, she pushed that. me to do that. You know, uh, marketing your company online, uh, it's, to me, you can win that way, but yeah. it's, it's going to take a long time. People really want to know who you are. People want to drink coffee with you. People want to drink wine with you. People want to sit down and get to know who you are. And pretty much know what your uh, your core values are. So I appreciate Kizzy uh, for uh, convincing me that that was the way to go. Come full circle, we started going to these networking events. I knew a lot of people from social media. A lot of people knew me from social media, and so I I knew the power of social media, but. Going out and networking with people, it just brought everything into kind of like full circle. Mm -hmm. So, Kizzy was a paralegal. Right. She was a paralegal for years. She worked hard. She was all in with the company. And so, when we started going to these networking events, meet different the people. First the first day. The first time the first, we went. The first time we went. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the beautiful thing was people got a chance to meet me. And they got a chance to meet my wife, Kizzy. Right, because they felt like they probably knew me a little bit too because my husband is really good about showcasing me on his page. So people knew me through him. So um, when they saw us together, they, they definitely felt like they knew us a little bit because they saw us on social media so much. Yeah. 
So when we talked about, when we seen all the real estate agents and how fun, how much fun they was having, talking about real estate and the how personalities. The, the passion that they had for, it was like, ooh, I wouldn't mind, you know, doing something like this. And and I and I mentioned that I think to a couple people while I was there, they just like, oh, I think you should do it. I think it'd be a good idea. You know, you'll love it. And literally, after I left there, that was in January. I think I ordered the book, uh, or maybe it was that there. night or the next day. She ordered the book. Yeah, I, I, I went online and, and got the class, and 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 two weeks later, I actually started taking the class online. So I pushed him to do something to get him out of his comfort zone. And in turn, it pushed me into a whole nother career. So, yeah, you know, yeah. when we walked out of the first networking event, I knew that's something I wanted to be a part of on a monthly basis. And I just suggested to Kizzy, I'm like, you know what? You're, you're smart, you're talented, you're beautiful. You love people. Uh, I, I really feel like you would be uh, very successful as a real estate agent. Yeah. And that was the first time I, I I knew somebody who's a real estate agent from um, some years before, um, and we used real estate agents to buy our house. But I never had been in an environment to see people talk about it so passionately and so excitedly. And so after I saw that, I'm like, this is like a whole new world right here. This is a whole new community of people that uh, I would love to be a part of. So uh, I was looking forward to joining the circle of real estate agents after that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, looking at, you know, thinking about this, our conversation now, I think this video should be more about getting out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and pursuing your dreams. And also, I think it should be about speaking life into your partners. Right. I never looked at like competing with my wife. To me, if, if my wife is winning, I'm winning. So she's spoken life into me. I speak life into her. When she's winning, we're both winning. So uh, fast forward today, 2023, she's one of the like top real estate agents at Keller Williams in Metro Atlanta. <laughs> I don't know what else I'm gonna say on that. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm in the Peachtree City office, and uh, definitely in the top percentage of the office, and I love it. The thing is, it's just um, I love every minute of real estate, and so that was one of the best decisions that I could have made. And I appreciate you know him helping me get to that point to realize that it would be a good fit for me. Yeah, and you know I think her because. She made it. She made it easy for me to grow my business. Like I didn't have a lot of drama at home. I didn't have any drama at home. I could just focus on building my my company. And so now that the company has grown and it, it's pretty much self operating uh, by itself, now I just feel like it's important for me to be there for her. Which now I've done that part. Now it's just more of uh, just sitting back listening to the ins and outs of what she go through but she's pretty much running everything on her own and doing her own thing right now and she's very successful at it and oh and i think with both of us we you know we had to put our head down for the first five years and so and the thing is that i have to be very transparent i was not as um uh what's the word <sighs> understanding as i should have been because, of course, when we first get married, I want him to go places with me and do things with me. And so I wasn't as understanding as yeah. I could have been, um, but I did understand what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, and so the good thing is, is I, uh, I did deal with it. And by the time I got to mine, he understood what I was yeah. dealing with. Yeah. So even though he may got a little aggravated, he knew for the first five years I had to do what I had to do. She had to do what she had to do. To build a business. And yeah. so and then I understood what he was going through. I can really relate to it. Now she can see it. it now. I can relate to it more. She can see it now because, you know, people always talk about investing your money. But I'm telling you, one of the biggest investments you can make if you're single, I don't care if you're single Dating or married, one of the biggest investments you can make is your time. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest investments you can make in your, is your time. 
So if you have a spouse that is driven, all I can advise the guys is, you know, just be as supportive and understanding as you can because her going out working those long hours and having those long days where she's flying out to different states and cities, it's going to pay dividends toward your relationship and marriage. So when you guys are on those beaches, you're, right. you're on those yachts, your kids are going to those uh, schools, you, you're paying for college educations, uh, cars, all of that is the investment that you put into your relationship and marriage. Right. And remember, though, how hard it was with you. Thomas, because when he first started his business, of course, he still had his full-time job. So I don't even understand how my husband did some of the things that he did. He would work all night, come home, maybe sleep an hour, won't even get in the bed because he don't have time. He will lay down on the on the floor sometimes and take a nap real quick and then get back up and got to get ready to go do a job. Or sometimes I would have to meet you and, and bring you a shirt. Sometimes you would have to meet me. So you don't even have time to come home. Looking at it now, I can honestly say, I hope I never have to do that again. Mm. But I know that when it did happen, it was it happened at perfect timing because, like, not to get all too religious on you guys, but I knew that God put that on me because he knew I could handle it. Mm -hmm. And all of that was an investment. All of that time was an investment for my future. So for me to have those days where... I had only, you know, 30, 45 minutes uh, sleep. I call it a nap. Mm -hmm. That's a nap. 30, 45 minutes and get up and work for another 20 hours. That was the investment because I saw the bigger picture right. for my family. Mm -hmm. It paid off. It really yeah. paid off. So we appreciate all that because it, it was a lot. He, he did a lot when he was first starting building up his business. And so we had to really be okay with you not being around for a little while because it took so it took a lot yeah you had to work a lot of hours it, it, it did so we just want to give you guys a, a quick synopsis of who we are and you know what we stand for so now that's why we enjoy traveling <laughs> as right. much as we do we do uh, because because first of all we both work hard and having something to look forward to is what keeps us working hard. You know, so if we know that we got a trip scheduled in another month, it makes us go harder to make sure that we, we're good and everything is good at the house, all the bills are paid and all that kind of good stuff. But it gives us something to look forward to. So I, I, I think that definitely helps keep us motivated. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. And we're just blessed that, you know, we both uh, had, haven't had any uh, significant uh, health scares uh, within our marriage. You know, I've lost my father, uh, but I lost a couple of people in my family. And I know you have also lost people in your family. So we've had some setbacks with that, with losing loved ones. But as far as the core, my wife and myself, our kids, we are all been healthy. Thank God. And we're just like very happy. And that's why now we, we have no problem, you know, coming to you guys and sharing our life with you guys. Hopefully, you know, it'll help somebody. If not, it'll be entertaining. Right. Right. Hopefully it'll be entertaining for somebody. <laughs> I, I, I pretty much, I've been keeping my jokes because I still feel like I'm probably one of the funniest uh, people on earth. But I've been maintaining because my wife said, listen, they ain't ready for your jokes yet. They ain't ready. You just sit back and, and keep everything. Hold it tight to your heel. Yeah, he always got something to say. <laughs> I mean, he, you know that word, term joning? <laughs> I mean, and so, and that, and that, we didn't talk about that. I had to get used to that when I met him because he liked to joan. He liked to joke. He liked to cut jokes. And I wasn't used to that, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, when I'm quiet, when I am quiet, you need to watch it. I was not watch used out. to that. And so he when he got jokes and he always cracking jokes and I'm looking like, really? And then he swear I don't laugh at his jokes <laughs> intentionally. And a lot of them because the jokes about me. I'm like, it ain't funny when it's about me. 
So, um, yeah, so I had to get used to him because we were definitely like night and day. But the good thing about it is we got the same core values. We got the same core values and we, we make it work. Yeah. We make it work. So if you guys have any questions for us, feel free to... Uh, Here you go with these questions. Listen. <laughs> They're going to ask y'all questions anyway. We just gonna ask, listen, y'all know y'all going to ask questions. I be looking at my comments. Y'all asking me all these different questions. I wore an outfit that I was proud of. <laughs> listen, I was proud of this outfit I wore to Johannesburg. I had a cat reach out to me and tell me that outfit was not a representation of Johannesburg. Well, we knew that though. We, we never knew which one it was because we knew it was different clothes for different countries and we just did not know which one yet. To the guy that reached out to me, I don't care. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I don't care. It still looked nice. It didn't matter what I it like was. the outfit. We wear it in America. Okay. He, he, he's wearing it in America. So. One of my favorite comedians is Michael Blackson. If you follow Michael Blackson, he's from Africa. And he wears some of the most beautiful attire okay. for a man that I like. So I picked out some of the things that I like also. So when I'm wearing this, it's a representation of all of Africa. I don't want to just limit myself to a certain continent in Africa. It's all of Africa. See, and I don't care. Y'all got him started. Y'all see, y'all, you we don't hear the nerd. Y'all don't hear the nerd. I was trying to keep all this. I'm on the cuff, but y'all hear the nerve. I wear what I like. This, this listen, this this newsboy hat I'm wearing right now, I don't even know if it's from Europe, Asia, Africa, America, but I like it. I think it's a little soft. Yeah, that's, 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 that's on purpose. That's, oh, that's, that's on how purpose. supposed to be. Oh, so okay. I think we got a little sidetracked. Okay, what were we talking about? We just were letting everybody know how much we appreciate them following us. Is that what we were? And subscribing to our channel. Yes, okay. We coming to you guys two times a week. We coming to you on Wednesday. We coming to you on Friday. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it may be Saturday by the time I saw <laughs> African family see it. That's okay. You probably... Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of later. South also. Africa, we love you. All of Africa, we love you guys. Yes. North, West, East, South, we love you. America, UK, Canada. Everybody who watches us, we like you guys. Russia. Thank you. Cuba, Mexico, we love all of you guys. And we're going to keep coming at you with... Random stuff. With random stuff. That's random. <laughs> so just don't, you don't know what you're going to get. Just <laughs> random just random so so all you right guys, guys enjoy your weekend it's labor day weekend over here so enjoy your holiday weekend and we will see you guys next week